today we're going to talk about gatekeeping and what do you do when your ex is gatekeeping access to the children and making co-parenting incredibly difficult for you. The first thing we look at are any specific behaviours um, that your ex is using to gatekeep and to interfere with contact. And this usually starts with illness. Oh, they're ill. They can't come this week. They're not very well. It might be that I need to pick them up half an hour earlier than they're meant to pick them up. It might even be that they start using overt threats. So if you don't pay me X amount of money, you're not going to see your kids. So it can fit on a wide spectrum of behaviours. But anything that involves you having to jog through one of their hoops or then controlling access to your children is essentially a gatekeeping tactic. And it comes from that internal theory that they have, which is they're the superior parents. They're the ones who have been there for the children more than you in their head, or they're the ones that should be allowed to make decisions for them. And it probably is accompanied by them making unilateral decisions for the children. They're then being the ones that dictate what is in the children's best interest, as opposed to it being a collaboration, which is why you then can't co-parent, because co-parenting is about cooperation and about collaboration and about mutual respect. As soon as you start seeing that they're not doing those things, that they are undermining you as a parent and as a person and undermining you, your opinions and ultimately saying, no, what I says goes, then they are going to start gatekeeping if they're not already. What are some of those common strategies in these cases and why does it help to know that? So I've talked about some of those strategies and it's important to know that so that you can understand and prepare. If your ex is starting to gatekeep, there's usually a spectrum. It might be that it's the start of the the demise of your relationship. You've just split up. You're angry. You're there angry at you. They perceive that you've done something wrong. And so they're going to punish you and they're going to use the children's shit. They're probably doing it in lots of other ways as well. You can't come and get your stuff. They've took your stuff out the window. You know, lots of different ways that they've punished you, but it's all coming from that initial pain of separation now in some cases that will calm down as they come to terms with it and you'll find a way where you can become civil and they'll put the kids first and it may well all sort itself out if you're watching my channel or on my website that hasn't happened you are dealing with someone who is ingrained in these beliefs they are ingrained in the belief that they have to present as the superior parents. And this is all because of that mentality of actually feeling very inferior. And when the separation occurs, three things are triggered within them. The abandonment wound, the inferiority complex, and often a transgenerational trauma from their own childhood. Something happened in their childhood and they're going to replay it through this separation and post-separation. And Knowing that means you can be aware of what is happening for your children and you can put as many protective measures in place as you can. Now, I'm not saying that these things are easy because unfortunately, these things normally come with false allegations as well. So you're very busy trying to disprove false allegations. You are trying to sometimes fend off the police or court action whilst trying to parent or get access to your children or navigate some kind of co-parenting relationship all at the same time whilst dealing with all the emotions and the mental toll of all of this it is really difficult so the more knowledge you have the better prepared you are for dealing with them knowledge is power as they say once you know what is going on, particularly within the mindset of your ex that is doing this gatekeeping, you can start implementing things in the time that you do have with your children to help them cope with emotional manipulation, to help them cope with 
becoming emotional caretakers for your ex, all the different elements that come alongside gatekeeping and lead to alienation, you could preempt them by helping your child with some of those skills and also building your case, making sure you're diarising every attempt that you've made to, to contact, every attempt you have made to stick to the agreement, every attempt that they have made to stop you from seeing your children, the drop-off in contact. Make sure you've got evidence of all of it so that when you have to pull that trigger on going to court, you've got it all ready and in front of you, you're not caught off guard by having to suddenly present it. So how do you set boundaries with someone who believes that they have full control over all parenting decisions? And how do you protect the child from being put in this position to minimise the impact on them? So parallel parenting is what is recommended and what that essentially means is you stay in your lane. You focus on the parenting in your time and don't worry about what is going on in their time. And when I say don't worry, I know that's a really difficult thing to do because worry, you're a parent, worry is part of the bag. You, you are going to worry, but you can't get involved. You have to let them parent in their way. Obviously, if you feel there's any emergency risk that is happening if you think that there's a danger to life you have to intervene you are gonna have to learn to let a lot of it go gather the evidence but don't go to them and say why are you doing this please don't do this so don't advise them don't admonish them and don't tell them what to do because these are all triggers for them that can then stop your contact they don't want to hear how that you have some suggestions. They don't want to hear your great ideas. They don't want to hear that you get on really well with the kids. They don't want to hear any of that. They have got their mind made up that you are not a good and safe parent. When you parallel parent, you create a almost a bubble around you and the kids and your parenting time so that you're not engaging in conflict with the other parent. And like I say, that means you putting those boundaries in place around your behavior, but equally respecting their their boundaries if they verbalize them to you as well. Whether you agree with them or not, showing respect counters a false narrative. Now, just on that, when I say their boundaries, that's about them. Boundaries around the children are different because what they will say is that's what they're doing. They're putting boundaries around the children. Actually, what you need to be able to evidence is these boundaries aren't necessary, that these are false and delusional fears that the parent is displaying. That's a topic for our another video. But in terms of the parallel parenting boundary, it is about reducing that conflict and making sure that the child is protected from that conflict between the two of you by not really having anything to do with them, by reducing the contact that you have with them and focusing all your energies on parenting. Use their behaviours as an opportunity for you to connect with your child. Think about it in terms of attachment. And what you want is for children to be able to go out into the world knowing that you are a safe space for them to come back home to. And if you have this safe bubble around you, then you are giving them the freedom to go home, to go to school, to go to clubs, and keeping that within your bubble without it causing arguments. Because if you argue over that they're going to football practice or gymnastics or whatever extra curricular activities that they do, then their ability to go out in the world and feel safe is going to be inhibited and that's going to affect their attachment to you and their attachment style and make them fearful of the world. So parallel parenting helps you to create that secure environment for them to explore and to come back and know that you are a safe space. So if your ex is gatekeeping and has just started this process, my three points of advice are gather evidence, put your boundaries in place and protect your child from the conflict and focus on attachment 
and activities between you and your child. I think you found that helpful. Thank you.